All righty. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Take a moment to pull back from the screen. I got my friend Rodney here. Rodney, the market's been kind of unique overall, and people have been asking me. They know I use Money.net and a whole bunch of other different platforms, but you're more on the institutional side of things day in and day out, and your setup is just a little bit different. Now, Money.net, we do institutional as well, but Fact set here had a couple questions on it. How do you organize your setup and, and, and properly use it? Give us some information, my friend. My setup has evolved. I've been using this now for seven years. So everywhere I go, I know my layout. I have all the screenshots of it and it tells me everything I need to know. And all I'm really doing is I'm translating the data in this for the CEO because he doesn't have time to really go through all this. So I'm basically like consulting him on the metrics, the ownership, um, active versus passive. You see here are your 13F filings. We have new 13F filings coming out on May 15th, 45 days after the quarter close. This is showing me what all the institutions have done. It gives me the breakout of the short interest, shares outstanding. I mean, this is what I've been using. You know, it's my cockpit. But as far as a trader, I don't think this is really for you like money.net, there's some other things out there. Those are more for like the traders. Like I get all the, all the news here, but I don't get like podcasts and, and live feeds like that. Um, this is more of being like an analyst or a sell side analyst that you need all those metrics and all that power. But for, for someone who's trading, you really don't need that. You need the level two. You probably need to be able to put a bunch of tickers in there and track them and see what's going on probably see the, the largest market movers for the day, who has the largest volume for the day. All that kind of stuff is much harder for me to do on FactSet. I can do it, but I really don't need that on a minute to minute basis when I'm talking to my clients. So that's the way I would really look at this. And also this is expensive. This is $3,000 a month. So additionally, I don't know if a regular person who's not working for a company can get this because I've never, I've never had to do that. But I really don't think this is, this is for the people that we're speaking to. But for me to give you the intelligence that I know and to use the charting and has all the technical analysis tools and things like that, and since I've been using it for seven years, it's my go-to. I love it. I love it. Now, Rodney, as a TNA individual, a technical analysis individual on this, we have a lot of, I'm going to say melancholy in the market before, but now that the Fed has come out with their commentary on this, we're starting to see a little bit of movement in the market itself. How do you feel about this down move today? Do you think it's just a sentiment down move or do you believe that we're going to see a continuation trend as a TNA guy? What are you seeing? Um, can you see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Looks good. This is expected, guys. Look at the chart. Like I drew this 4,200 is a huge level. We just can't get over that level. So everyone's seeing what I'm seeing. The algos see what I see. And look at all the macro headwinds. Look at the banking sector. We're raising rates. I mean, it, the risk here is 100% to the downside. Granted, we have all three moving averages here and we have support on the downside also. I think we could see some sideways consolidation between 4,000 and 4,200. And we could just do, it's a stock picker's market. And we could just see a sideways move in the S&P 500. And then you got to pick different sectors to get involved in. That's, I expected a down move. I expect a move probably to around 4,000 on the S&P 500. Then we make a decision. Are we going to bounce or are we going to break through that? And then if we break through that with volume, then you got to start looking at more downside. But the funny thing is you have Jerome Powell out there. He's saying the banking sector is good. Everything's good. We don't see any problems. And then 30 minutes, 30 minutes later, Pac West is like down 50%, you know? <laughs> so um, I don't think the Fed actually knows what they're doing, guys. And you can't really blame them because there's so many variables. Although it's their job to know, we're in this mess because they thought inflation was transitory. Not only wasn't it transitory, Inflation is sticking. We had the largest rate hikes in the last five months that we've ever seen in the history of rate hikes. We have banks going under. JP Morgan, I mean, we might call this the United States of JP Morgan at some point. They're going to own every single bank. 
and they're going to do something stupid down the line because everyone does something stupid and they can't, they can't, you can't see black swan events. You know, you're going to see that two, three standard deviation event occur on some bet. And then JP Morgan's going to be in trouble. And since they have, <laughs> I don't even know, 12% of the entire deposits of the country. I mean, if they were too big to fail in 2008, I mean, <laughs> they're never going to fail. They can't. You know, and speaking of black swan events and failing on this one, I'm sure you've seen the news on it. IEP, Icon set up there. What are your thoughts? Uh, in my opinion, I think they're setting up something on the inside. I think Hindenburg came out. They gave some data, but now they've stock price has lost almost 50% uh, of value since the announcement there, but they pushed yeah. off earnings till the 10th. And it almost seems like they may announce a buyback. They may announce something because in my opinion, uh, it's happened several times, but we have not been at this level since 0809. What are your thoughts since you talk with so many CEOs as well? What are your thoughts on a psychology aspect and a TNA aspect of IEP? I mean, it's interesting, you know, it, it lost about $6 billion. That's a lot $6 of billions. billion. Dollars, that's I mean, a that, lot of, huh? That, that's a lot of billions. That's the, you know, that, that's yeah. a lot of money. To that, lose. That, that's, that's pretty crazy. Um, and it's from Hindenburg research. It's a short seller report. These guys were probably short the stock before that report came out. I mean, it's very hard on a technical basis to even look at this because if you go back 20 years, you're, you're getting, you're, you're starting to get back to like 2009 mm -hmm. here. So I would really focus on the last couple of days on a TNA perspective. And you're going to have a real hard time getting through 3255 here, where you see that sideways. Condition. So that's going to be your, your point on the upside. You're trying to fill in the gap here. And on the downside, you have risks to the lows of 2838. So it looks here that you're going to have greater opportunity on the short side, given where the stock is trading as opposed to the upside. But you got to be careful with gaps, happen, um, overnight gaps happening in the stock. Listen, they come out. Listen, if Icon, if IEP comes out and announces a buyback and they have insider buys, you know 100% that they're not hiding anything and that this is a good buy because they're putting their own money behind it. The way you understand that certain stocks that get crushed and then you don't see a buyback and you don't see the CEO dipping his toes in, you know there that that stock is not worth owning. Because if the CEO himself and the company itself with the stock down 50% does not see value in that stock, there's no point that you should see value in it. You know, and, and that brings on a big question too, is that he has a lot of money sitting on, on the sideline here for, for it to come back. And looking from an FA perspective of things, there are so many companies that are making money on that side that are within their holdings. In, in your opinion, even though we're seeing a, a downtrend in, in the broader market right now, do you think companies like this and maybe even into the regionals as well may start to become a buy opportunity because they are just so beaten up due to the headlines and not necessarily the true blue numbers. Maybe I'm wrong on that. What's your thoughts, Rodney? No, you're not wrong, but this is more for traders, guys. Mm -hmm. These these stocks that we're talking about, they're in play. Like something down 50%, you're going to have major, major average true ranges where you can scalp a couple points. Uh, maybe you can find some, some buyer on the bid, front run him, ride it up, sell it. Um, these are for traders right now. I wouldn't invest in these guys long term until like we see some sideways consolidation. We see some of the volatility come out because if you're a long term trader, you really don't want this volatility anyway. So just wait, let the smoke clear. Okay, whatever. You lose out on 10, 15, 20 percent. It's okay. You still have another 30 percent that you can make. That's a, that's a home run in my eyes. But for traders, you guys should be all over these stocks right now. The regional banks, you should be getting involved there. You should be getting involved in IEP. Anything with news, anything with volume, you guys got to be playing because it gives you more opportunities to make money. And also, if you, you make a bad, bad decision, lose money, you have other opportunities to claw that back and make. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, Rodney, you got a lot of stuff going on, so I want to be respectful of your time overall. If people are wanting to work with you on a project or keep track of what you see going on in the markets, how can they get a hold of you? 
You guys could just find me on LinkedIn and my email is rodney at marketintel.com. It's a company that we just created. M-A-R-Q-I-T-I-N-T-E-L is the name of the company. And we're, we're getting this off the ground. We have a bunch of uh, publicly traded companies that we're working with, mostly in the biotech space. Um, we're expanding that. And I look forward to like tapping into the retail side to be able to be the bridge between these CEOs and retail investors. So that's it. what we're doing. All right. It's going to take time though. It's not easy. It's not easy building a business guys. It's not like you just show up tomorrow and all of a sudden everyone's throwing money at you. You got to, you got to, you got to hustle a little bit. Hey, crawl, walk, run. That's the big part. Yeah. About it. I love it. I love it. All right. Lasia relevant links in the description below. If you got a project going on, give Rodney a call on there. The man is a wealth of information with that being said, Rodney, thank you again for giving us some great knowledge points here. And I look forward to talking with you again on the next one, my friend. No problem. Have a good one.